To celebrate National Apprenticeship Week, we put together a short podcast to talk about common apprenticeship myths and give you the facts. In this session, I'll be talking with Apprentice Adele and discussing the top seven myths that surround apprenticeships. I'm Adele. I currently do a level four marketing executive apprenticeship um, and I'll be joining Jess today to discuss common myths. Hi Adele. So myth one, apprenticeships are only for school leavers. Um, That's not true at all. I actually started my apprenticeship at the age of 25 and I'll be 27 when I complete it. Um, Apprenticeships are definitely a good route for those starting out in their career, but they're also amazing for people like me that are looking to switch careers or upskill. Thanks Adele. This leads us into the second myth, that apprenticeships tend to be for people who didn't perform well at school. Some people prefer to do an apprenticeship because it's more hands-on and that's the way they learn, but you can do a an apprenticeship up to the degree level. So apprenticeships run from level two, which are for those people who are new to the industry and help them gain basic skills and knowledge. And apprenticeships go all the way up to level six and seven, which are degree or master's degree apprenticeships. And they're for those who want to be a specialist within their field. That's really good to know. Let's talk about the types of apprenticeships available. Some people think that apprenticeships are just for manual jobs. Is that true? Um, It's understandable why people think that. There are a lot of apprenticeships for things such as construction and engineering, but there's equally as many for IT, admin, accounting and customer service. Like I said before, my apprenticeship is in marketing, so that's not a manual job by any means. The next myth is quite a common myth too. I've heard this, that apprentices don't get paid very much. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so the, there is actually a minimum wage that apprenticeship uh, apprentices earn, but this depends on your age. So the government set the minimum wage of £4.15 per hour, but you'll need to check depending on your age as it does change. Um, lots of companies also pay their apprentices well above the minimum wage, so it will vary depending on your age and your employer. Okay, so what about when your apprenticeship is done? A lot of companies go on to employ their apprentices once they've finished the, um, with the learning position. According to smartapprentices.com, 90% of apprentices remain in employment or go on to further learning. So the chances look good that you'll get a job after your apprenticeship is finished. This all sounds very promising. The next myth is that the government decides what you cover in terms of learning. Is that true? is true there's now apprenticeship standards which are developed by employers and other key industry contacts and they work together to put down what they think an apprentice needs to know about the industry this way when you've completed your course you're ready for employment straight away finally we're coming to the last myth which is that 20 percent off the job training means you have to spend one day per week at college is that right It's not always going to college. Off-the-job training can be other things. Um, So it could be from shadowing other employees in your business or doing an online course. I don't always spend one day a week off-site from my job, but it does depend on a few things, including what's been agreed upon with your college and with your employer. Thank you for joining us, Adele. We talked today about some of the key myths surrounding apprenticeships, and we hope you've got a new understanding of apprenticeships. If you have any other questions, feel free to get in touch with us.